Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, new 21 game. This is a really hard problem. That's probably why you're watching this video. I don't know why they made this a medium problem because yeah, while the coding solution, to be honest, isn't a lot of code, it is definitely a complex problem. And I'm just gonna quickly tell you what we're gonna cover in this video. First, I'm gonna show you kind of a brute force, well not brute force, but an unoptimized solution using recursion, which is gonna be about big O of N squared, where I think n in this case is actually uh, going to be the k variable provided to us. And then I'm going to show you the optimized dynamic programming approach, which is going to be big O of n. I'll also mention that my solution is going to be different from leak code solution and most of the solutions in the solutions tab, because I think mine is a bit more intuitive, but I guess that's up to you. You can decide. Basically, we start with a score of zero and we keep drawing cards. In this case, the cards could, let's say, have a value from one to up until max points, which is going to be a variable. In this case, it's 10. So think of it this way. We have 10 possibilities. We could draw either a one, a two, a three, dot, 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 up until a 10. So these are the choices. And basically, we continue to draw. So in the decision tree, we're going to keep making those 10 choices on every single node until we reach a score of k or more points. So in this case, our k value was actually equal to one. So it looks like no matter which possibility, our score is greater than or equal to k at this point. And what we want to return is the probability that our score is going to end up being less than or equal to n. So this is a third variable. That's kind of why this problem is confusing. There's a lot going on here. So what's the probability that our score ends up being less than or equal to n? In this case, it's 10. So it looks like to me, no matter what we did, we reach the base case, like all of these are base cases. We're not going to go any further on any of them because our K value is one. But at the same time, each of these is less than or equal to the max number of points. So it looks to me like the probability is a hundred percent. And yeah, that's the case. So we return one, one is a hundred percent. Remember percent basically just means divided by a hundred. So a hundred over a hundred is one, but let's consider a different example. So let's say our K is equal to two our max points is equal to three. And let's say our N is also equal to three. So in this case, we have three choices. That's what max points tells us. We can draw a one, a two, or a three. So we already reached one base case over here where our value is greater than or equal to K. So we can't keep going anymore. Now, is this value less than or equal to N? Yes. So the probability here is true. We do meet the criteria. Over here, we also reach a base case. We're greater than or equal to two and also less than or equal to three. So this is also a good base case. Now over here, we did not yet reach two. So here we draw three more cards. We get a two, we get to a three, and we get to a four. We, I got these by adding one, adding two, and adding three to the source value one. So here very quickly, we see two and three repeated. We know these are the good base cases, but we now see a four as well. We know this is greater than three, so this one doesn't count. So a very naive way to calculate the probability here would just be to total up the good nodes, like the good base cases where we didn't exceed the n value and divide it by the total number of leaf nodes, which would get us four fifth. That might seem intuitive at first, but remember they said that each of these is an equal probability just because this one has more leaf nodes does not mean it should be weighted higher than these two. We want to weigh this, this, and this equally. So to do that, we have to add up the probability here, which is two thirds, add up the probability over here, which is one, aka three thirds, and the probability here, which again is three thirds, and then this gives us eight divided by nine, and that is the probability. Well, the way you would actually calculate this is actually eight divided by three. I mean, that's the addition of all of these, but then we would take that and divide it by three again, because we had three uh, terms that we added. We're basically taking the average of these three, remember? So we would divide it by three again, which would put a nine in the denominator. So the average is eight divided by nine. So that's one of the most important parts of this. And as you can kind of tell from this decision tree, these sub problems are going to repeat. 
So we can apply caching and that's the solution I'm going to show you very quickly right now, but I'll say it does get time limit exceeded on leak code. So I will show you how to optimize that, but I think it's worth understanding how to solve this because we're going to build upon this knowledge to solve it optimally. The reason this is going to end up being n squared, as you might be able to tell, is for every single node. And remember, the base case is going to stop at k. So we have up to k sub problems here. And for each sub problem, we are going to have to loop up to this many times, max point number of times. So actually, I think I said earlier that the time complexity of this was going to be n squared. I think I don't think that's entirely correct. It's actually going to be big O of k uh, multiplied by max points, which let's just say is m. So it's not going to be super efficient, but we can get this down to just being a uh, big O of k plus m. But first, let me show you this solution. Okay, so to code this up, first let's create our recursive function. The only parameter that we're really going to uh, keep track of is our current score. And what this is going to return is starting at score, like this is our starting score, return the probability of like the condition. And I won't keep repeating that condition because it's kind of a long one. And again, that's why this problem is complicated. But the main condition is the fact that like our ending score, if it ever reaches or exceeds K, we can't continue to draw cards and then we return a probability. So this is a base case. So we're either going to return one or we're going to return zero. How do we know what to do? Well, we return one if the score is less than or equal to N else we return zero. That's the base case. That's the probability that we're trying to calculate. And I'm just going to start out with the DP solution because we know that if this sub problem has already been solved before, this value will be in our DP cache and then we can just return the value that is cached and I'll declare the cache up here, which in my case is just going to be a hash map. You could also use a one dimensional array in this problem. But now what we're trying to do is ultimately calculate the probability. I'm going to initialize it as zero because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up all the probabilities here. And then after I've done that, I'm going to take them and divide them. And remember, since we're always going to be branching this many times, we literally can just take the probability and divide it by the max number of points. I have a single slash here because that is decimal division in Python. And once we calculate this, we want to score it in our DP cache. And then we're just going to return that same exact value like this. Now, how do we actually get those probabilities? That's the branching case. That's where we have to loop. And that's where, unfortunately, the bad time complexity comes from the fact that we have to loop inside of this function. So going from one up until max points plus one, this value is non inclusive in Python. So we really are just going from one up until max points. But for each I value, we want to consider calling DFS on the current score plus I. This is the value that we're drawing here. And then whatever that return value is, we can just go ahead and add it to the probability, which allows us to take the average of that. And now we're going to just pretty much call our DFS starting at a score of zero because that's pretty much the starting score in this problem. And I'll quickly run this to show you that it does not work. It gets time limit exceeded, even though the code itself is correct. So now let's see how we can optimize this. It's definitely not easy. So to solve this problem optimally, I think it's actually easier to skip straight to the dynamic programming solution rather than the recursive solution, because at its core, this is really a sliding window problem. And I'll tell you why, but first let's kind of visualize what might be going on with our recursive solution. So let's say this is our array and you can see I initialized it to roughly the length of the max points. So the first observation is that remember our score cannot exceed six if we want to have a positive probability. But if it does exceed six, we know these would all be zeros like in terms of the base case. And we know these are base cases because our K value is one. So everything at n to the right of one is a base case. So literally everything here is a base case. This happens to be the base case where we exceeded n. Therefore, the probability is going to be zero. And as you can imagine, any value to the right of here would also be zero. But we just don't care about those in this case. 
What about these values? What are they going to be? Well, they're going to be the base cases where we return one. So this is sort of how we want to initialize our array. Now, starting from here, how do we calculate the probability that is supposed to go here? Remember what this represents. It means starting with a score of zero. What's the probability that once we reach a base case, that our score is going to be less than or equal to six. Well, it looks like in this case, no matter what we do, we do reach a base case. There's six choices where we will land here, and there are four choices where we end up landing here. So what do we do? Well, we just take all those probabilities, add them up. We get six, divide by 10, because that's the range of our window. That's the number of max points. So then we get a probability of 0.6 or 60% that is supposed to go here. Well, this was a very simple example, but it actually tells us a lot about the problem. You can imagine that if we had additional values to fill over here, how would we calculate them? How would we fill the value that goes over here? Well, we just want to make 10 choices once again, right? We're going to first make a choice over here. Now, this is not a base case, remember, but since we are caching the value 0.6, we don't have to continue doing anything here. Like this now is just a value that we can read. We already solved that sub problem, but then we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So it looks to me now we want to add up all the values here and then divide by 10. And that's how we would get the value that goes here. Now, obviously this example isn't real. We can't go past negative or past zero in this direction, but still, does this tell you anything? Well, it tells me why would we want to repeat all of that work if we don't have to? It looks to me like nine of these values we already looked at previously. We just really need to add this one and remove this one. If we're keeping track of a window sum, then this problem becomes a lot easier, at least the way I'm showing it up where I'm going in reverse order because it kind of matches the recursive solution that we did. There are other ways to solve this problem, but I think this makes the most sense. So basically, that's the idea I'm going to be using to solve this problem. If we don't have to keep iterating this many times on filling each value, and we only need to fill at most k values in this case, then the time complexity, of course, is going to be big O of n, or you could say big O of k. And you can imagine that you could also optimize the memory complexity as well, because if we only need to look at the next 10 values, we don't really need all the extra ones in memory. But I'm not really going to do that optimization. It's not really a huge deal because in this case, the memory complexity is also, I think, big O of K. And actually, the way I drew out the solution, the memory complexity is not going to be big O of K because we'll have big O of K plus the number of max points, clearly, because we do have that plus 10 here. But actually, as you might imagine, if all of these are ones and all of these are zeros, we don't really need to have them in memory anyway. We can literally first just initialize the window sum with all of these taking plus six and plus zero. So our window sum is going to be six. So then we don't need these in memory anymore. As we continue to take our window and shift it to the right, when we need to pop a value over here, it's going to be easy for us to determine if it's a zero, because obviously if the index is greater than six, then it must be a zero. If the index is not greater than six, then we would want to read the value. But we also don't need these in memory because if the index is less than or equal to six, but it's greater than or equal to K, then we know for sure it's going to be a one. Now, if it's less than K, like over here, then yeah, we probably do need to read it from our cache or our DP array. So that's most of the intuition. I know this problem is really hard. But please try your best to think of it as a sliding window problem with, I guess, DP characteristics, because it's more of a sliding window problem than it is a dynamic programming problem, in my opinion. So now, finally, let's code it up. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that there are technically a couple edge cases. Well, really, there's one main edge case, and that's if k is equal to zero. In that case... I guess our starting score is equal to the target and we don't have to keep drawing cards. So I guess by definition, we return a probability of one and I'll actually do 1.0 to make it clear to us that we are doing floats in this case. And there is sort of a small optimization you could make where you could say starting at a score of K, which we know is like the target 
And even if we add the total number of max points to that, and even that value is less than or equal to n, then it's pretty much impossible for us to ever exceed the n value, in which case we would just want to return a probability of one anyway. Now, this one isn't required. It's just a small optimization that I thought was worth mentioning. But now let's start getting that window sum that I was talking about, which initially is going to be zero. And remember, we want to start at the first base case, which is k. So we start at i equals k and we keep going uh, the number of max points. So we can say k plus max points. And we want to then add to the window sum each value. Well, it, we're either adding a one or a zero. We're adding a one if i is less than or equal to n, else we're adding a zero. So it's a pretty simple loop we're doing here. And I'm pretty sure this could be written as like a math formula, but I think that'd be a lot more confusing and I'm too lazy to figure out what that formula is. But so far, so good, right? Like this is just initializing the ones and zeros and then adding them up into the window sum. The reason we didn't add them to our DP cache that I'm initializing here is because we don't need to remember. Now I could use a one dimensional array here, but I'm using a cache for a reason. It's gonna make things a tiny bit easier for us and I'll show you why. And by cache, I meant hash map, sorry. But now we're gonna go in reverse order, i in range starting at k minus one, just like in the drawing. And we're gonna go up until we reach the zero index. That's why we have to put a negative one here. And we're gonna go in reverse order. So we say the decrementer is negative one or the incrementer. Basically, to calculate the value at index i, we take the window sum, the previous window sum that we had, and divide it by the number of max points, basically the size of that window. Okay, so far so good. Now it's time to update the window sum for the next iteration of the loop. So we say that we first definitely want to add the current probability that we just calculated. That makes sense because we're shifting our window to the left, and we also want to remove a different value that was all the way to the right. How do we get that value though? Isn't it just going to be at DP at index I plus max points? Yeah, it is going to be there. But remember the way we initialize this, this key might not exist. It's possible. And I'm going to do this in a slightly clever way, which is to say if I plus max points is less than or equal to N, then we know either this value is in bounds or we want to set the remove value equal to one. Either we want to remove one because this is greater than or equal to K, or we actually want to get the value that exists here. And a little shorthand we can do for that is to say, try to get this value from the hash map if this key exists. But if it does not exist, then return one. And we know we'd only do that if this index was equal to K or greater. And we also know since it's less than or equal to N, that's why we're putting the one value here. But the else case is going to be very simple. We know this index is greater than or equal to N, in which case we know for sure that the remove value is going to be zero. And I guess we could clean up this else case by just taking this, getting rid of it, getting rid of the else, and just setting that initially to zero. But otherwise, we would update it like this. I know this is kind of confusing, so maybe you can be a bit more explicit. But in that case, I think we would end up with some nested if else statements, so which is why I prefer this. But now we are updating our window sum by removing the farthest right value and adding the newest value on the left. And we're doing that for every iteration of the loop. So once all of that is said and done, we can return DP at index zero. Because remember what our DP cache tells us. It tells us starting at score, it maps to the probability of staying under n or whatever the condition happened to be, right? Starting at the score, which is the key, it maps to the probability. We know we're starting at a score of zero, so we're going to return dp of zero. So that was a very, very long explanation. It's not a lot of code, but it's definitely some very complicated code. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.